In part one of my exploration series, I traveled to San Ignacio Lagoon in Baja, California, Mexico. I experienced some of the most magical moments among giants. I aimed to learn about gray whales and made it a mission to find sharks in a lagoon that spans almost 30 miles inland. It's safe to say the whales took the spotlight, and rightly so. Not only did I learn about these magical creatures, I gained a whole new perspective on sea life encounters. And eventually, I did find what I was looking for. Every evening, I explored the area around camp, looking for spots I felt would provide the best launch point to begin my search. Hopefully I can find some sharks around here. Just walk. The landscape is barren, but I would soon find out how absolutely beautiful it is from above. I had to contend with wind, however. That was expected. This is the desert after all. Wow, that dust is wild. The lines and textures so easily missed at eye level form art in the sands of this land, much of it formed by the winds that are ever present here. Right now I have the wind at my back, so I'm gonna be flying with a tailwind to where I'm looking for sharks. That can be a little iffy because of battery. Uh, if you're flying head went in, into the wind on the way back, it's gonna diminish your battery. So I have to be a little more mindful of the battery situation in this, these, uh, kind of scenarios. So here we go. Still, the winds, even though they were powerful at times, did not deter me from searching for sharks. My goodness, that wind is strong. I don't have any wind warnings right now, but that's because I have the wind at my back. I'm gonna go out to those little striations out there and see if I can find some sharks. You never know. So when I fly, I look for dark spots. It's pretty simple. Big dark spots. If they're sharks, they're gonna be moving. What do we got here? Oh, wow. Okay. I got something. Yep, that's a shark know what kind that is. It's so hard to tell. I'm gonna go down. Ah, oh, this wind is so strong. Water visibility is not good, but with this thing, this shark comes up, it's, I'm gonna be able to identify it. It's large, it's pretty big. I've searched a few times here, and I, I didn't see a shark with, um, with good conditions, and conditions aren't good right aren't very good right now. It's pretty windy, and the water is kind of crappy. But there's definitely it's so hard to tell. It is doesn't look like a great white. This was the only shark I found in what would eventually be a total of 13 days of searching. This shot was totally worth the wait. I've yet to 100% identify what type of shark this is, but its appearance does look like it's either a bronze whaler or a dusky shark. Remember, I'm not a scientist, I merely observe nature, but this shark is a testament to what it takes to find them. Patience and persistence. So that was it that one flight, and I never saw the shark again. It was time to go home. I felt the trip was a success. I returned with some memorable images of gray whales. The incredible experience of making eye contact with them and the appreciation of the beauty that is the desert. A place that will always remind me that even in the desert, beauty is abundant. The gray whales are the stars of this lagoon. It's hard to believe that in the 1930s, only a few hundred remained, 
and all of the gray whales in the Atlantic were killed. Still, today they approach you in a way that has to be experienced to be believed. It is quite humbling especially when you can see from above how the whales approach you and realize how badly humans have treated them in the past, and some continue to do so. Notice how this whale goes straight to the boat. It pops up right next to it, all on its own accord. That's the beauty of this place. For just a few brief moments, I shared a mutual joy I know existed when I touched a well. You just feel it. It's something you can't explain in words. It's pretty amazing to know that there's a chance I may see the same well again in the future. 800 miles north. Along Malibu's coast, these whales started their journey in a lagoon that afforded me an experience of a lifetime. They endured the perils of the sea and its obstacles both natural and man-made. Just to get to this point, a fraction of the way of their journey. There is some evidence that suggests that whales are not only conscious, sentient animals, but also self-aware. I can attest that it's not until you see one eye to eye, when you make that contact, that you understand that they might just be.